Welcome everyone, my name is Lynn Olson, I'm a Principal Consultant at Snowden. Uh, today I want to give you a demonstration of the latest feature of Supervisor V8. This is our Krieging Neighbourhood Analysis or KNA tool. The data I'm going to use today is a gold data set you've seen here on the screen. It's a sub-vertical load with drill spacing at around 5 by 10 metres. And these are 8,500 sample points in here. In order to run a Krieging neighbourhood analysis, we need to first go through the standard modelling of the variogram. I'll show you the models that I've put together for this particular domain. Uh, this is gold, so I've used normal scores variograms. And there's my models for my three directions. Now once you have those models in place, we add a KNA underneath the Continuity Models tab. So right hand click Add KNA. When you first get into this, you'll see on the right an option of a grid for block sizes. So this is all the block sizes we're going to test. Now the KNA process is all about statistically testing your estimation process to see which scenario gives you the optimal results. So we're going to run a series of tests in a single location, initially varying block sizes. We're going to calculate the Krieging efficiency statistic and the slope of regression. And then we're going to compare those across the different scenarios to pick which ones give us the optimal results. I've set up a grid here between 2.5 by 5 by 5 up to 40 by 85 by 5. Remembering my drill data is on a 5 by 10 metre grid. If I update that initially, it's going to graph Krieging efficiency in red on the left hand axis and slope of regression in blue on the right hand axis. It does give you two dotted lines up at the top here at 80% Krieging efficiency and 0.9 slope. They're set at what we call our ideal situation uh, and they will be movable so that you can drag them down just as a bar to pick your scenarios. In addition to setting the block sizes, you need to make sure that you've got your parameters selected appropriately. Under the parameters tab on the right hand side, the first thing it gives you is your block centroid. Now that is linked to the 3D viewer, so if I click into my 3D viewer, I can now see the location of the blocks that I'm looking at with respect to my data. In the 3D viewer, there is a K and A tab and there are drag bars to allow you to move the location of that block. So you can physically type the values on or you can move it. My suggestion is go into a two-dimensional view, use the drag bars in the X and the Y to locate your block where you'd like it. Then we can go into a sectional view and we can get ourselves into an appropriate elevation. It's always good to go back to the 3D view afterwards and just make sure we are where we want to be. But when you do this, I do suggest running two or three versions. I like to pick a test area that is in the middle of my typical drill spacing, one that is in an area of poor spacing and one that is in an area of closer spacing. That gives us a bit of a sensitivity across our domain. Now if I go back to my KNA, it's now gone green saying it requires update because I moved the location of my block. The other things that are in here is the search and number of samples. Now the search by default comes from your variogram, so my angles and my ranges are pulled from my variogram model. If I want to adjust that, I can untick the use continuity models and I can manually adjust those. Now I'm going to increase my search. Because I'm looking at block size here, I don't want it to be impacted by running out of data. So I'm going to let it use lots of samples and a reasonably large search so that that doesn't impact. I can also adjust my discretization. Once we're happy with the parameters, we can update that. Now if you look at the results here, I've got uh, the first five are increasing X and Y block size with a 5 metre elevation. Then I've got five scenarios with a 10 metre elevation and 
1.5 with a 20 metre elevation. You can see the 20 metre elevation gives slightly reduced results. But there's not a big difference between having those different elevation sizes. 5 and 10 metres do give a slightly better result. We get improvement in results out to a 10 by 20 metre block size and then it drops off. To select the scenario of interest, we click onto it. You can select more than one. Now once we've selected the block size, we're then going to refine this and we're going to go and look at the impact on number of samples used for the estimate using these block sizes. So if we select two, then we'll get two sample scenarios inserted. So I'm just going to do one for this exercise. Now in addition to this graph, which gives you creating efficiency and slope of regression, we also get a graph of negative weights in the estimate. Now you can't see anything on here because at the moment there are no negative weights in this particular estimate. Now remember negative creating weights tend to be a result of either bad clustering in your data or low nugget long range variograms. This is a very high nugget short range variograms. We're not actually seeing negative weights. I'll show you a scenario afterwards where we do see some negative weights in there. On this graph you'll see the sum of the negative weights which will be a negative number, the bar will come down and the number of negative weights in blue, the bars will be going up. You can sort your scenarios, so at the moment they're sorted by the order that I have them in this grid, but you can adjust that to have them ordered by creating efficiency or slope if you wish. You can also show a summary. If you tick on the show summary box, this gives you a summary of the parameters that you have used for the K and A. If we want to add a second K and A with a different block location, we simply go back to continuity models and add another K and A. We come in and do the same process and select a different location for it. Now with these block size parameters, you can set these manually. However, you can go to the library. Uh, if you're working in deposit where you always want to look at the same block sizes, so you can set them as defaults. So in the library down on the bottom left, there is a visor library option. And in here, you have KNA defaults. So the block sizes, the search ranges, which are actually ratios, I'll show you that a little bit later, and the discretization that you want to look at. And once we're happy with our block size, we've selected the optimal block size, we can click the button to refine samples. What this is going to do is it's going to take that 10 by 20 by 5 meter block size, it's going to set that, and it's going to look at varying the number of samples. So you see on my tree on the left now, I now have a KNA samples based on a 10 by 20 by 5 meter block. If I also wanted to see 10 by 20 by 10, I could select that one. There is a shortcut, you can double click on it, and that will take you straight into the next level. When you go onto the sample one, the default is looking from 2 to 100 samples at a step of 5. I like to look at steps of 1. So I'll update that. So that's going to show me what happens if I just use two samples, what happens if I just use three samples. So that we can look at how many samples it is required to get reasonable results and at what stage do we stop seeing any improvement. In addition, when we're looking at scenarios with a lower nugget, longer range, we can look at those negative creating weights and typically what happens is when you start using too many samples, you start getting negative creating weights. So we can look at that point. So this is the typical pattern you see when you're looking at a sample analysis for K and A. We can zoom in on this. The results are not particularly good for this scenario because we have such a short range continuity and such a high nugget. But you can see that there is a point at which it really drops off and is really bad. If we say 12 samples is acceptable and we're getting some improvement out to around here, we can actually pick two. It gives you a little text box on the bottom right here to tell you that you need to pick two scenarios. And that defines the minimum and maximum number of samples that we want to use for estimation. Again, we can look at the negative weights and you can see the two selected here. 
I'll show you that on the, the graph where we'll actually see some of it later. Once we've selected the number of samples we're happy with, we can refine. And the third scenario we're going to look at is the impact of the search. So here I've got KNA search from 12 to 45 samples, which is what I selected. Now the way the search work works is it takes the search I set up for the original one, which was my um, 100 by 60 by 17, and it factors it up and down based on those ratios. And you can set those ratios as defaults in your library if you wish. Now, I want to look at a specific range of searches, so I'm going to adjust these slightly. Now I know that my variogram has a range of around uh, 60 by 50 by 20, so I expect that the second scenario I'm looking at is going to be somewhere around the range of my variogram. And I want to look at what happens if my variogram if my range on my estimate is a lot longer and what happens if it's a lot shorter. You can add into these, there's no limit to the, the amount of scenarios that you look at except computing time. So once I'm happy with those I can select update and here's the results changing the search. Now if I just click on that show summary, it will summarise for you what we've used so far. So we've got our 10 by 20 by 5 metre block with 12 to 45 samples and we're adjusting the search each time. So you can see here you get poorer results at the short range, but once you get out to about that range of the variogram where it's around 90% of the variance, you get similar results from there on in. Keep in mind when you look at the search one that if you set your maximum number of samples, so here I've set it to 45, if I increase the search range and there's not, it's not finding more than 45 samples, so there might be 60 samples in that search, but I'm getting limited by my maximum. So you might actually be getting the same results in all of these ones here because it's already found 45 within the 50 by 30 metres. So it's finding the same 45 and the 100 by 60. If you want to, you can do this process with a larger maximum number. So when you select your search, set your maximum at something quite high so that you can see the true impact on your search and then you can come back and adjust that maximum back to something realistic. This makes sense to me, however, it's sitting at about 90% of my range of my variogram, which is where I'd expect to get a reasonable result, so I'm going to select that scenario. Once we've got that one done, we can do the last refinement, and that is for discretization. So in the last one here, if I show my summary, this is all my selected parameters that I've used, and I'm now looking at the impact of discretization. I've set some discretizations I want to test up in my library. I'll update that. Now this is a fairly typical scenario. What this is telling me, as long as I don't use one by one by one, which is a point estimate, I'm getting fairly similar results. Increasing my discretization is not going to improve things much. We do tend to try and keep our discretization anisotropy in line with the anisotropy of our blocks, which is why I've selected these particular ones to test. So I'm going to select 4 by 8 by 2. Our rule of thumb is that you tend to need about 25 to 30 discretization points within each block. So now that I've selected that, that is my final parameters. That is my optimal parameters. So a 10 by 20 by 5 meter block. 12 to 45 samples, a search range of 50 by 30 by 15, and discretization of 4 by 8 by 2. It is a very quick and simple process, and you can easily test different scenarios. So you can copy that in and try and change something and look at the impact. Now what I've done as a sensitivity is I've repeated this process with a shorter 
a longer range, lower nugget variogram, just to show you the impact of the variogram. The variogram is the main impact on creating neighbourhood process. So this second variogram I've inserted down here, I've taken, I'm using the same data, but I've artificially dropped my nugget down and increased my ranges by about double, just to see what the impact is on that KNA. Now this is my block size KNA here. If I show you that compared to the previous one. So on the left, this is my new one, and you can see here the creaking efficiencies in the, the one we selected, which is 10 by 20 by 5, creaking efficiency sitting up near 90%, and the slope sitting right up near 1. We've got 0.985. Whereas in our previous example, we had a creaking efficiency of 70% and a slope of 0.96. So we've incrementally improved the results, particularly the creaking efficiency, because we've got a lower nugget and a longer range. However, we do now get negative creaking weights in the process. So in the negative creaking weights, the red is the sum of the weights. So in this particular instance here, the sum of the weights is minus 0.3. And there's 41 negative weights, so that's the blue line on the right axis. So the scenario we've selected still has a lot of them. So that's saying to me the 20 by 40 by 5 actually gives a lot less negative creaking weights. And it actually gives better results in terms of creaking efficiency for this scenario as well. So we can now use both of those in terms of selecting a scenario. I'll show you the same for the number of samples. So in our original case on the right here, we selected 12 samples as our minimum, and that gives creaking efficiency of around 16% and a slope of 0.55, so it was very low. For the same number of samples, we now get a creaking efficiency of 76% and a slope of 0.78. So it's vastly improved the results. The other thing we can see of interest is the negative weights that we get in that estimate. Remember in the first one we didn't actually see any negative weights, whereas in the second one we do. So if I go to the negative weights on this, once we get up above 50 samples, all of a sudden we start to see some negative weights. There's not many because of this particular situation, but we do start to see some negative weights. Now remember, it does vary depending on the scenario that you look at, okay? So it will change depending on which scenario you look at. So with the Creaking Neighbourhood Analysis process, it is now a very quick and simple process to go and insert these and to assess the impact of different variograms of different domains. Once you've got it set up, you can copy and paste it from one domain to another. You can look at the same parameters, the same block size, under different variograms, different data spacings, and look at the impact so you can see relative quality. Thank you for your time. If you've got any questions, um, please follow up with Snowden support. Thank you.